Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are doing a vlog style video today. I'm Riley and we are on the Slifka farm today. I am not a full-time farmer myself, but every once in a while we come over here and see what's going on. Today we're looking at some winter wheat that is definitely in the tillering stage right now. It will be in the heading stage here before we know it. But we're not here for the winter wheat. We're here for something extremely unique. I mean, extremely, extremely unique. We're gonna look at corn. We are seeding corn in Montana on the month of June. And we are going to explain why, because this is no ordinary thing for our part of the country. Number one, we don't grow corn here. Corn just does not do well out here. So why are we planting it? And more importantly, why are we planting it with an air seeder in June? Let's find out. But before, before we get to that, I got one other thing for you, because we had some green paint show up on the farm. We're gonna check that out. Red sprayer. Green sprayer. I present disagreements between my dad and grandpa. Makes it some camel. here in a while. What the heck? It's all these yellow things in here. Alright. I was just in here counting the cup holders. <laughs> there you go. How many cup holders? I'm not done yet. <laughs> this just in from Grandpa. He thinks it should take your pressure and your booms down to 30 for drift. Just do whatever the preset is in the What's your overall thoughts? It has lots of cup holders. I think the thing that John Deere has probably really figured out is the monitor. And yeah, the monitor, that thing's a learning curve. I've never actually even run one of those before, but... There's so much brighter it is in yeah. colors. And the... It's a better interface, it looks better. Cases Pro 700 looks like Windows 95 and sounds like Windows 95. That's the other thing. The sounds, the chirps that this thing makes, yeah. that all of John Deere's monitors make, makes sense. You don't even have to look at the thing to know what's going on here. They kind of almost always been that way, like even the 9000 series combines. Yeah. It wasn't an annoying. Yeah, they're good with sound, which I appreciate. Anyway, I gotta go, so... Thank you, thank you. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is an R4044 John Deere sprayer. Matthew, what's the boom length on that thing? 120 feet. Okay, 120 feet boom length. It's got sectional control, it's got... It's basically got all the modern things to it, which means it also is gonna have a pretty modern price tag. I don't know what that price tag is, but yeah, we're looking at... Some of these sprayers can go up to about half a million. It is incredibly crazy how expensive farm equipment has gotten over the years. Yeah, the tech is great, but 
man, those prices just make it extremely hard for us to do what we do out here, especially if we want to run new equipment. A huge shout out to our local John Deere dealer, Frontline Ag, for setting us up with one of these. There it goes. Um, incredibly, incredibly awesome of them to be able to send one of these down to help us out. Well, our owned sprayer, the one we own, which is a Case Patriot, is currently down. Thirty pounds, one ounce. All right, everyone, we are in the tractor. We are seeding corn with an air drill in Montana, the month of June. Why? Well, we got the answers. Why are we doing this? Because we're dumb. No. <laughs> no. Um. So a few different things. We have a cow calf operation, and I mean, depending on the year, we could use some more fall grazing, and. I haven't decided. Early fall, late fall, we could use either one. It's June. Uh, we've seeded our other crops, which is malt barley, spring wheat, and I guess that that's it for this year. Anyway. Yeah. Usually we do uh, peas and canola as well. well this year yeah. for various reasons. Not this year. We're keeping it simple, and yeah, still should be hopefully a good harvest this year. Anyway. Well, we did do we did do hay barley, what we call hay barley or forage barley too. But um, anyway, so we got our cool season crops in, which is the predominant crops in Montana. It's now, what, June 4th, I think? And now we're in the envelope of warm season crops. So we gotta plant something warm season for these cows. Something that'll stay green in the fall or until a freeze, which we do freeze early in Montana, a hard freeze. So that leaves a few crops, sorghum, sudan, sorghum sudan, which is a cross between the two, millets, I mean, I don't know them all. Those would be the more common ones. Corn is a warm season crop. And we also have fallow on this farm, and we're trying to do less fallow for a myriad of different reasons. I won't go into all of it, but fallow costs money throughout the summer. no tills an awesome thing, don't get me wrong, but no-till in itself conserves a lot of water in the soil. And so now that everybody around these parts are no-till farming and you have all these hills, um, we're, we're, we're storing almost too much water. And if you add to that, that for a period of, you know, whatever, like four months, you let ground go idle, you create even more of a moisture problem. So, so we're trying to move away from that. And we're not gonna move away from it totally because to plant all the acres, even that all of which we normally do fallow, we don't have the infrastructure for, meaning, you know, combines, trucks, grain storage equipment, all these things you have to think about. So uh, anyway. So we're taking a piece of ground that is kind of a wet piece of ground. We are gonna try seeding it to corn. And this corn will be for grazing only. So the cows are gonna harvest it, hopefully. I won't have any harvest expense into it. They've got all the, all the right pieces and parts. We're gonna just let them harvest it. Yeah, so yeah, basically what that means is no combines, no choppers literally turning the cows out into the field and letting them eat this grazing. So, one other thing. This is not a planter, this is an air drill. So, what do you think this thing's gonna look like when it starts growing? It's not gonna look very good. Well, who knows, it might not even come up. I, I've never done this before. I might be seeding too deep. I know I'm seeding plenty deep, but compared to what I'm used to, 
because we've seen small grains and stuff. Um, yeah, I think I tried digging during his first pass. I didn't even find one. I wasn't digging deep yeah. enough. We're going against all the rules here. We're using a, a, a drill, which is not precise. It's a controlled spill. We're using a drill that's on 10 inch spacing. You know, what's a lot of your corn? I mean, you guys tell me. Uh, I, I forage corn on 15 inch rows and we're on 10. Uh, field corn I'm, is on 30 inch rows typically and we're on 10. So yeah, that means we're on a third. All you guys over in Midwest that, yeah, grow your field corn that you're gonna run combines through, 30 inch row spacing, cut that down to a third and that's what's going on here. And we're not getting the consistent spacing either between seeds. This is not a planter. This is an air drill. So the way an air drill works is, see that big tank back there? That's of course where all the product is. At the bottom of each hopper in that big tank, there is a little meter, basically a little cylinder that can slowly rotate, slowly dump product out of that tank, depending on what the ground speed is and what rate is set to that meter. So it's slowly dumping that out. And then there's a big fan back there too that's blowing all of this through tubes up to the toolbar or the drill up here, which is then basically falling down into the openers here and applying the product into the ground at a relatively certain depth. This is a precision drill. So we do have decent control over that, but this is not a planter. This is not near as accurate as corn is meant to be planted normally. Test wise, we're probably as accurate as a planter, but with this drill, but obviously we're not singulating, so uh, singulating the seed. So it's, it's, it's just a controlled spill. There's a handful or maybe two handfuls of people in central Montana trying this. It's kind of a, a new thing just this year. I mean, new to some people. Um, I know other people that have done this for years um, and had success with it. I don't know if I will. We'll see. I think that's about all we all we know about this for now. It's going to take some time for us to uh, find out. Number one, is this going to grow? If it does, how it's going to grow, what it's going to look like, and if we're going to be turning cows onto it this fall. Really interesting, but that is the answer of why we are growing corn in Montana on dry land in June and seeding it with an air drill instead of a planter. That's like all of the wrong things right there. So, quick refresher, grazing corn. Cows will be grazing it, it will not be harvested. It won't be, no choppers, no combines, grazing corn. Oh, and then here's something else to keep in mind. The beauty of a cow, and the beauty of using a cow to harvest something versus mechanically. The cow is returning back to the ground as they graze. So, and, yeah. you know, in the form of their manure, in the form of uh, their urine, it's very biological. So, so you kind of have that benefit. So the combine's not doing that so much. Forest harvester's not doing that so much. So there's something. Yeah, good thing to keep in mind as well. Anyway, We'll be back on this project uh, here sometime in the future on some sort of update. Thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next time we do one of these. We will be doing a status update hopefully on what's going on with this corn in Montana project. I'm Riley Slifka. I'll catch you in the next video.